It's Wes, and today it's a very exciting day. I have been waiting far too long to get a Gobo. I wanted to get one that was a little newer on the market, a little different. The well-making Gobo. If you're not familiar with the Gobo is, well, let me tell you. You could also call this a light projector. You have on the back here our nice compact LED light. We snap this light projector onto it, which focuses our LED light out at the front. On the front here, we actually have a Canon EF mount lens. And so if you want to change your focal length or get better quality optics, you can just put any EF mount lens on here, which some of them are going for cheap right now because everyone's upgrading to the RF mount. And then right on the front here, as you expect with the lens, you can focus it to get the spot to look sharp at whatever distance you want or blurry at whatever distance you want. One of the main points of using a gobo though is being able to take these inserts, you slide it into the device and it casts a shape on the wall or person or whatever you want. Speaking of which, now that you're focusing light, dust becomes a much bigger issue. <laughs> Normally not blowing dust out of your LED lights all that often, but when you're using a gobo, you kind of have to because you are focusing it and once you have that there, here we go. You can move things around. Let's get this focused. We're very close, much closer than usual. And you can see there's a little bit of schmutz on the side of that that I would have to blow out. So we can cast our window on the wall. Now, if I wanted to make that bigger, I would have to either move this back or use a wider angle lens. But since I'm a Sony shooter, I don't have a bunch of EF lenses sitting around. so. That's kind of a shame for me. <laughs> what comes with this is a default set of projector attachments. We've got the spots, got the starburst. I really like the starburst one. Got the slit, which I kind of wish was thinner. The Venetian blind and the lines, which I actually enjoyed far more than I thought I would. Can kind of get a bit of like a 80s future retro look going on there. And it comes with some colors. Uh, not a big fan of using the colors because I'm kind of afraid that they'll melt. It does get pretty hot in here. Not as hot as I expected. Should I be concerned that this has some plastic in it? Will it melt down? Actually, it does not get nearly as hot as I thought it would. And I once left this on, on a 300 watt LED for several hours straight and nothing melted. Smelled pretty hot for the first hour, but after that, all that stuff off gassed and gave me cancer, you know, just the way that things work. This is one way of using the Gobo. This is, this is the way that you're supposed to use it. Let me try something else here. I'm gonna dismount. Get rid of this light. And I gotta say, this is how I usually use the Gobo. Because when you're using a Gobo with an LED light source in it, it eats a lot of light. An LED COB panel is designed to spread the light around in as even a fashion as possible. And so when you're doing that, a lot of that light gets lost in this matte black interior. It's only capturing the light that comes straight out and putting into that lens. LED lights to begin with aren't as bright as a flash. And then they're spreading around, you're losing light. Enter the Godox 8100. This light can be focused. So if I go to my zoom modes here, you see I can do 28 millimeters, 35, 50, 70, up to 85. And it's round. So if I stick this in here, all of a sudden my light is not spreading around all that much. It's shooting straight forward and it's focused. You can probably see it here. So what we're producing here is significantly more light than we would with an LED light. Way more, several orders of magnitude brighter. You would think that it would be hard to plan for. Now, if you're trying to get the light in a particular point of your subject, like right on the eyes, that is harder. But if you're just trying to get it on the background, this is bright enough 
that it has permanence in your eyes because it kind of sears it onto your eyes for a second. It's harder to show on video because it is very fast. But if you're just looking at your backdrop, you're like, oh, that's where the light is. You know where it's landing because this is so bright, it will sear into your eyes for a second and you'll see exactly where it's supposed to be. So this is honestly, most of the time, my preferred setup with the Gobo is sticking a nice round light in here. Now, I could put my 8300 Pro in here, but that has a normal round bulb and we're losing a lot of light again. And in that case, it is hardly any brighter than putting the 8100 in here because it's focusing it the way that it's supposed to be. Just fantastic combo here. Now let's talk about pricing. I don't have a particular uh, comparison structure for Gobos, but this one comes in at $240. And that includes that set of uh, light modifiers that I have there. The most common one that we will see is the Godox projector that's $254. Also comes with a little set of things. But Wellmaking makes a ton of these reflector modifiers that you can buy, but they are expensive. Buying a kit of these is about $70 for more of them. They have bigger kits that are over $200 for these little stamped pieces of metal. And honestly, this is the most exciting part of this. I don't want to speculate on what the profit margin for these must be, but it has got to be high. I really wish that they were selling these for less. It reminds me a lot of the uh, Godox AK Roundhead Magnetic Modifier System that I was really excited for a bunch of accessories to come out for, and then when they sold them, they cost a lot, and they're just cheap little plastic things. Kind of frustrating because this is a fantastic ecosystem. It works great, doesn't cost that much. The only issue that I've had with it is the clips on the side here. They kind of come loose if you put it in wrong, but then you just shove them back down again. It's not a big deal. Overall, the build quality is decently solid. We have some plastic here, a little bit of metal here. A lot of your money is going in to pay for the lens in the front. But again, this is not the most high quality lens. It's got a little bit of chromatic aberration on it. Overall, I have so enjoyed using this. As you can see from the pictures that I've shown here, it has been a blast. If you do not have a Gobo and you do studio photography, I highly recommend getting one if it's within your budget. There will be links down in the description below for things like this. If you have any questions about this or want to pick one up, links down in the description below. And down in the description, I'll have some links for some higher resolution image samples if you want to pixel peep those. So until next time, let's go take some really interesting photos.